Hey, what's up guys? Lucas here and welcome to the tour of my newest pack of brushes, the LP Painting Brushes. This is my best pack of brushes so far. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can get the brushes they just dropped and you can get them down there in the description. If you're watching this because you just got the brushes, then congratulations. You are going to absolutely love this pack. This pack is different in three ways. Number one, it has a traditional feeling. We sample all of the textures for these brushes from real traditional media, real papers, real paint so that you have the feeling of painting with wash, with oil, when you are using this in your iPad or computer. Number two, we have a variety of different textures. Here we made sure that each brush feels absolutely unique so that you don't have to struggle looking for the difference between one brush and another one. And number three, and this is what you're watching right now, this brush pack, unlike other brush packs out there, comes with a guided tutorial because I want you guys to take the most advantage out of your new brushes. These brush packs are made for me, first of all, and second for all of you. So I want to share exactly what my intention was when creating this pack for all of you guys. Okay, so let's jump right here into Photoshop and show you what your new pack of brushes is capable of. You can get this brush pack for Procreate, for Clip Studio Paint and for Photoshop. And even though I'm gonna be showing it to you right here in Photoshop, know that all the brushes were adapted for each software so that they work as similarly as possible. There are going to be some small differences, but hopefully you're going to have a smooth transition if you are like me and you work in different softwares. So there are 60 brushes that come in your pack, 50 brushes that are the main body of your pack and 10 brushes that are a bit of a bonus that I think it is absolutely essential for any digital artist out there. As you can see, the brush pack is divided into six different packs. It is divided this way so that you find your way faster in your pack instead of losing time trying to find your way and find which brush do you want for what. The first pack, the bonus essentials, is meant for you to create smooth illustrations like these ones right here. These illustrations don't have as much texture as the other ones and they give you a more digital vibe. That is why this pack is called Bonus Digital Essentials. The second pack is the Fine Brushes and just like the name says, here is where you're going to find all the brushes that you need for fine effects. You can use them for drawing or you can use them for this type of hatching techniques like what you can find in Lay and Decker's work. The third pack and this one is actually my personal favorite is the Dry pack and here you're going to find things that resemble dry media so you have some dry wash dry knife, dry hairy, dry block, and you can see the type of effect that these brushes give you that is a bit more grainy, like you are painting with something more like pastels or dry paint. The fourth one is the wet one, and just like the previous one is gonna give you grainy, textury feeling, this wet pack is gonna give you also textury feeling, but it's gonna be much smoother, creamy, buttery, smooth for all of you that love painting with things like oil or wet wash. And the last two packs are very self-explanatory. You're going to have textures, so you can fill up your canvas with different types of textures and you're going to have the smudgers that are going to allow you to soften your painting and move it around the canvas. Now, if you're wondering why some of the brushes are marked with blue, these are brushes that allow you to color mix. If you're using Procreate or Clip Studio Paint, brushes that are going to drag the colors around the canvas. Unfortunately, Photoshop doesn't allow us to activate that color mixing capability. So that is why we have to come up with another pack. And if you're using Photoshop, you're going to have these five little extra brushes that are the mixer brushes, the mixer wash, dry, oil, etc., that are going to simulate what these other brushes are capable of, but they are going to have their own kind of unique flavor to them. So they are going to drag the colors around the canvas and actually give you some of the most realistic traditional effects out of the whole pack. Unfortunately, because of the software limitations, we cannot have these brushes in all the different packs, so only you guys in Photoshop get the bonuses because you cannot have color mixing. Something super important that I want you guys to take with you is that these are way too many brushes. I don't want you guys to waste your time trying to find your way and trying to find which brush to use instead of spending that time painting. So I want you to already know that there are going to be some brushes in here that are going to become your favorites and those are the brushes that probably you're going to use for 80% of your painting. I want to share with you these brushes right here because these are my personal favorites and the ones that I use most of the time. They are my favorites, that doesn't mean that they are gonna be yours also, but I wanted to share them with you because maybe they're gonna help you to make this pack a little bit less overwhelming so that you have maybe a, a start line, a start place for you to find which brushes to maybe play with at the start. So with that said, 
let's go and jump and play with some of these brushes so that I can show you exactly what they are capable of. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what each brush pack is capable of. We're gonna start with our bonus essential pack and here I put all of my brushes so that you can see exactly which brush I am using at every single moment. So this first pack, the bonus essentials are very self-explanatory so I'm not gonna spend a long time between them. You have an airbrush and an airbrush grainy or noisy that is the one that is gonna uh, you want to use when you don't want to have like a very very smooth and digital look from the first airbrush. This airbrush hybrid is very interesting because you can use it at a small size to create very solid masks but at the same time when you make it bigger and for example I'm gonna lock the opacity of this layer right here you can use it to create gradients without having to change between different tools. Then we have the round creamy which is one that I use all the time for creating masks because it's very smooth and every single person out there needs a solid brush without opacity or anything like that. Then you have this beautiful LP dagger that you can use to create very fine and very delicate sketching or inking if you prefer. And the airbrush line which is very interesting is for those of you that want to create line art but the harder that you press the more that it feels like an airbrush. So give it a try. It is very interesting to draw with this tool. Then we have one of the most interesting tools out there. This is called the LP edger and what it does is very interesting. You can use it to create folds around your shapes because it has one hard edge and one soft one. So very versatile for creating, for example, wrinkles on the face and things like that. Then we have a regular ellipse with opacity. So you can paint with this one. A lot of people like it. I personally don't use it a lot, but it is very useful to have it in your set. And then we have a very essential tool. This one, because of the popularity of the artist, reminds me a lot of Sam Yang or Sam Dos Art style because he uses this tool all over in his art. And I actually find that it's very nice to add a little bit of this in almost every single painting. Even if it's painterly, it can have something like this to help the texture in your painting. That is the bonus essential, so let's go down here into the fine brushes. The fine messy is a great tool if you want to fill up spaces. Most of the time I use it because it gives me very messy results, so if I want to fill up a shape with line art, I can use this one right here and scribble around to fill up my shape with this. The fine gouache is a beautiful brush if you want a more painterly effect, but from a brush that can go very very fine like this one. You're gonna find something very similar also with the acrylic, but you can see it has more texture and this fine translucent is actually the one that I use most of the time for my uh, line art in these painterly illustrations. So you can use it to simply draw whatever you want. And then with another layer, you will come with other brush and fill up these shapes. You can use the fine canvas if you want to have lines with a canvas texture, or if you prefer to have some color mixing, the fine oil is one that allows you to have that nice color mixing. Again, not available in Photoshop, but if you're using Procreate or Clip Studio, then this is the tool for you guys. Let's go now to the dry brushes. And this one is my favorite sub pack out of the whole LP painting brushes. This one right here, the dry brush, brushes, it starts with the dry wash and this one is very very nice for me, that is why it's all the way up there to the top. It's one of the brushes that I use most for everything together with this dry knife. Both of them are very very nice. Uh, what I love about the dry knife is that it has these very sharp edges, so I can very easily use it to sculpt something with these sharp edges. A lot of the times I use this same dry knife as an eraser so that I can carve back into the shape and make sure that I get whatever silhouette I am looking for. This dry gouache, on the other hand, is a bit softer, so that means that I cannot make as defined shapes as with the dry knife, but what I love about this one is how natural, how traditional it feels in comparison with the other brushes, so I love the texture that it has. Dry flat is very similar to the dry knife, in fact the shape that they have is the same one, but you can see that the texture is much harsher on the dry flat. Another that I like a lot is this dry hairy that you can use for creating a more soft hairy bristly effect, but if you really like bristles then you can use this dry bristle that is very similar to, if we go up here, to the uh, rake, but you can see that this one gives you a more digital look, while this one that we're just using here, the dry bristle, gives you a much more traditional, uh, organic, full of texture look. The whisker is very similar to the bristle, but it has fine bristles, so you can create a finer effect. From the wet set, my favorite brushes are the wet knife. Similar to the dry knife, this one has 
the same shape, but it doesn't have nearly the same amount of texture. So you can see that it gives you a more buttery effect. And what you can do with this one, if you're using Clip Studio or Procreate, is that you can also mix the colors in a very nice way between them. So this one I use a lot also. Wet acrylic, similar to the wet knife, but it has a tiny bit more texture. So if you are looking for more traditional texture or what I would say, something between the wet knife and the dry knife, you can use this wet acrylic and it's going to give you very nice effects. Wet oil is my favorite brush for mixing colors. So that means that I use it a lot in Clip Studio and in Procreate, but not so much here in Photoshop because here it doesn't have that property of color mixing. But if you're using the other two software, then make sure to give wet oil a try. From the texture section, you cannot go wrong with any of the brushes. All of them help you a tiny bit to create some type of different texture. So one that I use a lot is this one right here, the texture impasto. I really like the texture that it gives me. If you use it in low opacity, you can see that it gives you all of that very nice canvas impasto technique or texture. And if you use it in higher opacity, it gives you some nice color variation that helps you to fill up whatever space you want, whatever canvas with uh, a surface that is very interesting to paint on. I use the dots a lot to create some color variation inside the texture. And I use also this fur texture that is very nice to create some direction in your textures without having to use something that feels a little bit digital. This one feels very nice texture, full of grain and character. And now we arrive to the smudgers and the smudgers, again, each one has its own characteristics, but if there are a few that I really use, let's start with this LP Smudge Creamy. This one has been with me for the past, I don't know, many, many years. I use it for all of this, all of this. It doesn't matter if it looks very digital or if it looks traditional. This is my smudge partner. This is the one that I use for almost everything. And the reason why is because it smudges very nicely. You can just come in here and use it. And very fast, just a couple of strokes, you have a smooth transition between the different colors. But if you are looking for something that feels more traditional, then this smudge palette might be for you. Because with this one, you're going to have, again, this very sharp shape that you can use to move the colors around very much like if you would be painting, for example, with very wet oil. The smudge smoke is very useful, but I use it for very occasional uses. And that is when I want to create things that are a little bit blurry. For example, if I want to add some motion blur to this shape, or if I want to create something that feels like a visual effect. It is called smoke because very easily, if you drag the shape around, you can get something that looks fiery or smoky. That is why I use it all the time for visual effects. Spray is also very nice. It allows you to make a transition between different colors, but with a grainy texture. And down here we have the Reiki, that this one is also very nice if you want to have something that feels like you're brushing the shape, creating some hairy effect, for example, you can use this Reiki for that effect. And finally, if you're a Photoshop user, then you have access to these nice, beautiful mixer brushes. If you are not a user of mixer brushes, then hopefully this is the pack that is going to convince you that they are very good to use. Simply select any of them and you're gonna be maybe surprised with how they work. Instead of just painting with a normal color, for example, I'm doing here, you're going to sample colors out of the canvas and paint with that combination of colors. So for example, if I come in here and I select this point that is the combination between this brown and orange, I'm gonna press Alt so that I can sample the color and I'm gonna just click right there. And what is gonna happen is that the next time that I paint, I'm gonna paint with right that combination of colors, you see? Now I'm not painting with orange or brown, I am painting with both of them. So it is like I am charging my brush with the colors of the canvas. That means that if I repeatedly charge my brush, I can slowly make transitions that actually feel very, very close from what traditional media would do, something like this. And very quickly, you can come up with something that feels very traditional. This little dinosaur dragon alligator was created mostly with those mixer brushes, and that is why it came out with this type of texture. This mixer wash is the one that I use for most of my painting, but also you have a mixer dry. If you want to, for example, create a dry canvas effect, mixer 
oil if you like the effect of the mixer gouache but you prefer to have something that has the canvas texture so this one is very good if you want to imitate oil and then you have the mixer knife because of course I love the knife shape of my brushes and this one has to have it and there you go that is the tour of your new brushes the LP painting brushes if there is something that I recommend you guys that have the brushes is to not just leave them there watch this tutorial and that's it but install the brushes and go through them a little bit so that you can start finding what are those favorite brushes of yours and if you're watching this on YouTube and you don't have the pack of brushes I hope that this little tour enticed you made you maybe curious on going and giving these brushes a try you can find a sample of the brushes also down there in the description with a few of my favorite brushes from the pack but of course you can also go down there and get the brushes for yourself I am sure that you're not going to regret it if you're anything like me these brushes are just going to make painting in your iPad or computer just simply more enjoyable and are gonna make you want to paint more see you guys on the next video where I'm actually gonna show you a demo on how I use my LP painting brushes for a full proper illustration